Hello everyone, welcome to IELTS Dragon. My name is Julius and I got a band 9 in the IELTS speaking exam. I only took it once and I am not a native English speaker. So today I'll be sharing with you the techniques that I used in every criterion in the IELTS speaking exam that helped me get a band 9. Let's begin. First off is grammar and accuracy. Well, I did not only use basic grammar, but I also used advanced grammar. Well, to be specific, I used conditional tenses and inversion. So how did I use conditional tenses and inversion in my answers? Well, let me start with conditional tenses. In part one, I simply used the first conditional tense. When do we use the first conditional tense in the first place? Well, basically, we use this when we talk about things which might happen in the future. For example, one of the questions I got was, how often do you buy shoes? My answer was, rarely. I'm not into buying shoes since I don't have a lot of money. I have three pairs of shoes at the moment, and I'm happy with those. However, if I make more money, I'll surely buy some new shoes. Notice how I used the first conditional tense in the last sentence of my answer. By using that tense, I was able to develop a better answer with good grammar. In part 2, I used the third conditional tense. Let's understand when to use this conditional tense. Well, we use this when we talk about an impossible condition in the past and its probable result in the past. It's hypothetical and unreal, and there's always an implication of regret. The cue card that I got was, describe a person who has been an important influence in your life. So how did I use the third conditional tense in my monologue? Well, somewhere in my monologue, I said, if my boss hadn't asked me to work overtime last month, I would have met Angelina Jolie in person when she paid a visit to an orphanage in one of the poorest villages in our country. Here, I was expressing my regret for not seeing Angelina Jolie using an advanced type of grammar, which helped me sound natural and confident of my English grammar skills. That sounds great. A big plus point for the criterion grammar and accuracy. And by the way, we can omit the word if in my answer for the third conditional and start with Hadn't my boss asked me to work overtime last month, I would have met Jolie. And that's what we called inversion in a conditional tense. I'll talk more about inversion later as this is the second type of advanced grammar that I used. Now, here's an interesting technique which I actually used to develop a better monologue in part two. Well, I was just making up a story. It wasn't really true that Angelina Jolie is the person who has been an important influence in my life. No. So the reason why I talked about Jolie was that uh, before I took the exam, I already prepared the topic, describe your favorite actor or actress. During that time, I gathered lots of information or details about who Angelina Jolie is, what is her contribution to the United Nations, things like that. When I took the exam and got the cue card, describe a person who has been an important influence in your life, I realized that I could use the knowledge or the information that I gathered upon researching who Angelina Jolie is. And that was really good because I was able to talk for two minutes and it was very spontaneous talking about her humanitarian work and how it influenced me. Although it wasn't really true because I was just making up a story. So my point here is be flexible. Study as many topics as possible because you'll never know. You may get one of those topics that you studied and prepare as many ideas as you can because those ideas may come in handy. You'll never know. You may be able to use those ideas in developing your monologue. All right, let's proceed to part three. How did I use the second conditional tense in my answers? This is how I did it. 
In part 3, I used the second conditional tense. Let's review the second conditional tense. Well, we use this when we talk about impossible or imaginary situations. One of the questions my examiner asked me was, Do you think you're a good influence on other people? Notice how I answered that question and how I used the second conditional tense. So my answer was, I believe I am, especially to my friends, family, and to the children in our village. Actually, I'm a member of an organization that helps less privileged children in our village. I've participated in feeding programs every now and then and donated some school supplies. If only I was a millionaire, I would surely help these children more by providing scholarships or financial assistance. Well, anyway, I still continue to be a good influence on other people in my own little way. Basically, I used simple grammar in the opening part of my answer, but I just added the second conditional tense to my answer for me not to sound too basic. The second type of advanced grammar that I used in my answers that helped me boost my mark in the criterion grammar and accuracy was inversion. Do you know what inversion is? Well, let me review what inversion is and let me demonstrate how I applied inversion in my answers. Inversion simply means putting the verb before a subject. This is normally used when making a question. However, we can use this in special cases to emphasize something for dramatic purposes and for formality. The first special case is when we use a negative adverb or adverb phrase at the beginning of a sentence. For example, Rarely had I gone to malls when I was a child. Little did I know that I had spent lots of my time watching Jolie's movies. Instead of using a normal sentence construction, I used inversion in some of my answers as my strategy to secure a good mark under grammar and accuracy. We can also use inversion for a conditional tense. Take a look at the example. Level up your grammar skills. Don't be lazy if you really want to get a good mark in this criterion. The next criterion is lexical resource. Well, I did three important things here to make sure I'd get a good mark. First, I minimized using the word very. Before I took the exam, I spent time learning descriptive words that would best describe a person, a place, a thing, an animal, and even an idea. I didn't really use the words very beautiful, very small, very tall, very big, very happy. I avoided using those words because I knew that those words wouldn't really help me. So what I did was I built my vocabulary. To be specific, I studied synonyms and understood how to use them correctly. Bear this in mind, you cannot just simply use any synonyms of a particular word. You also need to spend time understanding how to use them correctly, because if not, you may end up using them incorrectly. For example, let's take the word cheap as an example. That word has different definitions, but let me focus on the three definitions. First, inexpensive. Second, low quality. Third, disgusting. Each of these words has different synonyms and the synonyms are not interchangeable. When learning synonyms, you have to understand the context of the sentence. For example, yelling at his secretary in front of other workers is an example of cheap behavior. The word cheap in that sentence cannot be replaced with the words inexpensive or affordable. So by understanding the context of that sentence, you will know what's the appropriate synonym to use. That's how I learned synonyms. The second thing that I did under this criterion was using collocations. 
As we know, collocations are words or phrases that are commonly used by native English speakers in their everyday life. I really spent time learning common collocations because I wanted to sound more natural like a native English speaker. Also, I spent time learning common expressions such as a piece of cake, if my memory serves me right, the bottom line is, it's not my cup of tea, things like that, which I actually used when the examiner asked me about online shopping. So I said, uh, online shopping is not my cup of tea, something like that. So spend time learning collocations because these words can definitely help you improve your mark in this criterion lexical resource. The third technique that I used under this criterion was using cohesive devices. As we know, cohesive devices are words or phrases that connect ideas. To be specific, I used transitions in my answers, more importantly in part two when I developed my monologue. Because I used transitions, I was able to create an organized monologue. By using cohesive devices, I was not only boosting my mark in the criterion lexical resource, but also the criterion fluency and coherence, because basically my answers were coherent. Let's start talking about the techniques that I used under the criterion fluency and coherence. So how did I achieve fluency and coherence? Well, let me start with fluency. Before I took the exam, I studied with a professional IELTS speaking coach who helped me develop my confidence and improved my English communication skills. She's amazing because she's able to pinpoint all my weaknesses, which I didn't realize in the first place. And because of that experience, I learned that it's really important that we need to ask help from someone who is professional in this field. Because sometimes we think that our skills are good enough, but actually they're not. Well, she's also a Filipino and she's kind of strict, which I really liked because her strictness helped me motivate myself to do my very best. Well, if you have a strict teacher right now, don't take it personally. Instead, accept constructive criticism and just do your best. After I studied for two weeks with that professional IELTS speaking coach, I decided to study by myself for one month, one hour a day. So what did I do to be fluent? Well, I recorded myself answering part one, part two, and part three uh, questions. And after that, I took notes of my mistakes, such as repeating the same expressions over and over again. And I also paid attention to the fillers, such as ums, ah, uh, ah, uh, something like that. So I wrote down all of my mistakes and re-recorded myself answering the same questions. I really did my best not to commit the same mistakes because you know it's kind of tiring to record again and again answering the same questions and that was really tiring and that was my way of disciplining myself to do my very best to achieve fluency and because of that yeah when i took the exam i was really fluent as for coherence well i just used cohesive devices which i discussed earlier because I used cohesive devices in my answers, I was able to organize my answers and make the examiner understand my answers clearly. Let's move on to the criterion pronunciation. Well, before I took the exam, I spent time reviewing the fundamentals of pronunciation, such as understanding the vowel sounds and the consonant sounds. I made sure to understand the proper placement of my tongue when pronouncing words. I also reviewed diphthongs and monophthongs. So if you're not confident with your pronunciation skills, then spend time learning those things. We're so lucky in this generation because there are so many online resources that we can use for free. One bonus tip, which I believe it's worth sharing. Honestly, I studied accent reduction. Well, 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 I know accent is not included in the band descriptors, but at that time, I really wanted to sound like a native. So what I did was I spent time 
understanding how native English speakers speak. To be specific, I studied liaisons or connected speech. And that was really helpful because I was able to improve my way of speaking. So maybe you can give it a shot. You can access lots of online resources about accent reduction. Yeah, just give it a try. <laughs> it's very important to prepare before you take the exam. Study as many topics as possible. Formulate your own ideas or you can check my other videos because I shared plenty of ideas. But remember this, never memorize sample answers because you will surely mess up. Until next time, have a lovely day. Bye.